after discussing about the nasopharynx and oropharynx let us discuss about the last component of the pharynx that is the laryngopharynx now let us recollect the boundaries for each of the subdivisions of the pharynx the nasopharynx extends from the base of skull to the soft palate the oropharynx extends from the soft palate to the upper border of the epiglottis the laryngopharynx extends from the epiglottis to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage where it becomes continuous with the esophagus the laryngopharynx is also known as the hypopharynx and it is the inferior portion of the pharynx and it extends from the upper border of epiglottis to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage in this picture you can see the laryngo pharynx extending from upper border of epiglottis to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage and it corresponds to the vertebral levels c4 to c6 the walls of the laryngo pharynx or there is an anterior wall in its upper part is the inlet of the larynx which you are seeing and in the lower part it is the posterior surfaces of the retinoid the cricoid cartilage which consists of the lamina of cricoid cartilages and lateral to the inlet of larynx on either side you will be seeing a depression in the mucosa and it is known as the piriform pieces or fossa which you can see in this picture so lateral to the larynx then the posterior wall which was opened in this picture the mucosa lining the pharyngeal muscles there is prevertebral fascia the retropharyngeal space all reinforced by c4 to c6 vertebra so that's the posterior wall or if you see the lateral walls of the laryngopharynx there are no features specific for this lateral walls and it is formed by the mucosa lining the pharyngeal muscles coming to the communications of the laryngopharynx superiorly it is uh, continuous with the oropharynx and inferiorly with the esophagus and the functions of the laryngopharynx are it is both respiratory and digestive pathway in this picture you can see the entry of air through the nostrils through the nasal cavity and nasopharynx and passing through the oropharynx part and laryngopharynx where it is passing anteriorly into the larynx whereas the food it is entering through the oral cavity it is the we are seeing here and then passing through the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx and going posteriorly into the esophagus the lining epithelium of laryngopharynx is a stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium now let us discuss about the piriform fossa which is seen in the laryngo pharynx the piriform fossa is a mucosa lined small depression which you can see in this picture one on either side of the laryngeal inlet and what are its boundaries if you observe anterior medially you are seeing the array epiglottic fold anterolaterally it is bounded by the medial surfaces of laminae of 
thyroid cartilage and thyroid membrane. So, anteroneterally is the medial surface of lamina of thyroid cartilage and thyroid membrane. The thyroid membrane connects the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone. Posteriorly, the fossa is open to the pharyngeal lumen. So, you can observe it in this picture. And above, it is separated from the vallecula of epiglottis by lateral glasso-epiglottic fold. So, what is that vallecula? Let us review. Now, what you are observing here is the tongue and this is the anterior two-thirds and posterior one-third which you can identify and the demarcation between the two components is the inverted V-shaped sulcus terminalis and in front of which you are seeing the circumvallate papillae and this is the posterior one-third and it contains the lingual tonsils, the lymphoid aggregations you are seeing and this is the upper part of the epiglottis and the lateral margins of epiglottis and in the midline the epiglottis is connected to the tongue by means of the median glasso epiglottic fold and laterally you are seeing it connected by the two lateral glasso epiglottic folds and the space between the median glasso-epiglottic fold and lateral glasso-epiglottic fold is the vallecula. So, you are seeing the vallecula one on either side of the median glasso-epiglottic fold. In this picture, you can see the palatine tonsils located between the palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal folds in the tonsillar fossa. So, now you understood about the boundaries of the pyriform fossa. The structures that are closely related to the pyriform fossa are the internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels. These structures, they pierce the thyrohyoid membrane and they travel outside the mucous membrane from medial to Later, the branches of internal laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve, they lie deep to the mucous membrane of the pyriform fossa. So, the important structures that are related are the internal laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve and superficial, superior laryngeal vessels. After learning about the location, boundaries and the important structures related to the pyriform fossa, let us look into the clinical importance of pyriform fossa. Foreign particles in the food can get lodged in the pyriform fossa, especially the sharp articles can good hooked to the mucosa. So, for example, the fish bone, which are sharp, it can get hooked to the mucosa of the pyriform fossa. So, the surgeons were attempting the, to remove the particles. They will be maneuvering with the sharp instruments that can damage the underlying nerves that is the internal laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve. They can get damaged and these nerves are supplying the laryngeal musculature. Damage of these nerves results in paralysis of laryngeal musculature. And this uh, pyriform fossa lies deep to the superior polo thyroid gland. It will be connected to the gland by a sinus tract that can become a potential site for recurrent 
infections. So this is a developmental adherence. The thyroglossal duct to the laryngopharynx. If it persists, it can cause this condition. So that's about the pyriform fossa. After discussing about the three components of the pharynx, that is the nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx, let us discuss about the Waldeyer's lymphatic ring, which is a ring of lymphoid tissue at the oropharyngeal isthmus. And you can see in this picture the cavity of the pharynx and surrounded by the lymphoid tissues. And this Waldeyer's ring is formed by pharyngeal tonsil posteriorly which is also known as the adenoids and the tubal tonsils you are seeing posterolaterally in relation with the eustachian tube the palatine tonsils the most prominent part of the Waldeyer lymphatic ring which you are seeing anterolaterally then anteriorly is the lingual tonsils in relation with the dorsum of tongue so now you are familiar with the constituents of the Waldeyer's lymphatic ring and you are also seeing the nodes that are draining into this Waldeyer's lymphatic ring. For example, the retropharyngeal lymph nodes into the pharyngeal and then the tubal group of nodes and the jugulodigastric group connected to the tonsillar and also with the tubal tonsil which is the palatine tonsil and tubal tonsil and the connection of the palatine tonsil with the jugular chain of lymph nodes and also with the submandibular lymph nodes and the connection of the lingual tonsils with the submandibular nodes and submental nodes. So the importance of this Valdez ring is it's a defensive mechanism of respiratory and digestive system. This is another picture of the Valdez lymphatic ring at the entrance into the pharynx. So you can see the location of the pharyngeal tonsils or adenoids. This is the histological structure of it and the position of the tubal tonsils and the palatine tonsils, their structure you are seeing. Then on the dorsum of tongue, anteriorly is the lingual tonsils. And with this we have completed the description of the three components of the pharynx and the structures nearer to it. Now we will be moving on to the wall of the pharynx, the structural components in relation with the wall, that is the various fascia and the muscles. Then we will discuss about the blood supply and nerve supply of the pharynx. Thank you.